I'm back in Quito, Ecuador. I'm here at the iconic Casa Gengo Hotel on Plaza San Francisco. And this time I'm going to take you on a Quito tour that is a little bit different. Casa Gangatena invited me to stay with them, not only to check out the hotel, but they also organized a tour of San Roque, their neighbors in the historic area, because not many tourists visit this area and it's quite special. So we are here at San Francisco Market with Alex, who is also a local guide, and Marta Madrid. She makes traditional drinks here. I'm so excited because she makes this drink I have not seen anywhere else. Very traditional, difficult to make. It takes time, and so a lot of people don't make it anymore. It's called chicha de hora, and it is a fermented corn, and I guess it's best described as like a corn beer. Very traditional. This is a market where you're not going to see tourists. This is definitely a local market in the, in the neighborhood of San Roque. I love that this tour is like not just like all the same things that you would see on any tour in Quito. This is a real local tour. Mm, okay. Doesn't taste like fermented corn. Actually tastes very bright, light, a little bit of citrusy. Almost like a, a light fruit drink, a lemonade. You can have it with or without sugar or panela, which is unprocessed sugar. I asked her what was the most traditional and she said to put a little bit of sugar in it. I think it helps because it's still tart, but not too tart that you can't drink it. It's very, very refreshing. Ecuador is famous for its flowers, especially its roses. So on one side of the market, there are a section that looks like it's just flowers, but actually this is also a medicinal section. So there are people like Rosa, who we're going to, and she will do what is called Olympia. And so you go there and you tell her what's ailing you. It can be anything from gastritis to a broken heart. She has a number of herbs and tonics, and she basically can put together, she has the knowledge to, to help you. And so this Olympia, she gave me a bit of a demonstration, um, but most people actually, they show up and they get down to like a bikini or shorts, so that they can have this limpia on their skin. But she gave me a little, a bit of one to explain the different herbs that she uses and what they do for you. It smells fantastic. I am smelling so much better than I did before I went in and I feel great. And she's just so, so lovely. She said you can come in, she's here every day along with the other vendors and you can get your own limpia. Just be prepared to tell her what's wrong with you. If there's something wrong with you. And we discovered truly local spots that we would have never discovered on our own, like this religious figurine restoration shop that also fixes scars on people's faces with the same techniques. And Sombreria Benalcazar, where people come from all over the country to get their hats, because the type of hat you wear, the shape, shares where you are from, and then also minor details like if you are single, dating, or married. Lenin. Lenin. Oh, wow. The walking tour was great, but at the end, Shea Tiff blew my mind. I learned so much about the quality of chocolate and chocolate in Ecuador. I think this spot is a must visit in Quito. It looks like a chocolate on a stick, but it is cacao honey. Mm, it's tart, but fruity. Mm, it's really good. Mm. Okay, cacao nibs. Mm. Oh, it's, it's like a, an oil. Yeah. It's good for dry skin. 
I've eaten chocolate all over Ecuador, and although I thought I had seen it all, I came to Quito and I'm blown away. I'm at Chez Tiff, which is a cafe that houses the chocolate company Indomini Baez and it's a husband and wife team that are committed to using one specific cacao fruit called Arriba, which is endemic to Ecuador. So right now in Ecuador, most of the production is by this hybrid cacao plant, but they are so committed to maintaining the heritage and keeping this as a viable cacao fruit that it is the only one that they use. While here, learned so much about cacao and chocolate making around the world, and perhaps you didn't know this, but it was recently proven that the cacao fruit existed here before Mexico. So it's actually from the Amazon and was found here long before. Mexicans may argue that, but this is now a new fact that has been proven. And then also learned that Ecuador only produces 5% of all of the chocolate in the world. However, when you narrow that down to a very specific fine chocolate market, Ecuador is actually producing 60% of it. So if you want to get the best chocolate, you need to come here. And if you want to try this very specific Arriba endemic cacao fruit, this is the place to go. It's in the historic district and it's a great shop. They also have bars and then these bonbons which they showed us how they made by hand. Everything is done by hand, even how they harvest the cacao fruit. They've got really great flavors like passion fruit, amaranth, quinoa. They also have spicy, sea salt, the ones that we know. But I really think the most interesting ones are actually the Ecuadorian fruit. This is the passion fruit. We saw it made in front of us. 10 minutes later, it's done and it's in my hand. Oh, okay. If you've ever had, <laughs> if you've ever had chocolate that is like, has some kind of fruit flavor inside, I usually hate those because they have this like fake fruit flavor. It's usually in Canada, like strawberry or orange. And frankly, it's disgusting. This was a burst of passion fruit in the middle of the most intense chocolate flavor. This was fantastic. Mm. Metropolitan Touring built an amazing custom tour. I already knew all the standard places in Quito and they knew I loved food. This tour really exceeded my expectations. I learned so much. This is the room. Look at all of the detail, including the ceiling. But don't look too long, because I've got something special to show you. This is the view out onto the square. This is absolutely gorgeous. We've got coffee, tea. I think this is actually from, is this from Loha? And then, the bathroom. Look how big this bathroom is. This is a historical building and yet it has a huge bathroom. Again, looking out onto this beautiful square. Ah, oh, I wish I were staying here more than two nights. I'm already sad about leaving. So overlooking one of the busiest plazas in Quito, I thought it was going to be really loud because there is a celebration this weekend and then Andreas just shut the door for me. Can you do it again? So loud and then silence. It's so loud. <laughs> silence. The windows here are amazing. Oh, it's like you get the best part of being in the middle of a city without the noise when you don't want it. I love it.
So just like at the Galapagos in Mashpee Lodge, when you come here, you can do everything by an app. They have a QR code and it makes it really easy because you can have all of the menus from the bar, room service, also here. So I'm the kind of person, I know it's weird, but I like to know what's on the menu before I arrive in a restaurant so that I am ready. They have things here that are traditional like Tigrillo, which is a house special, but they also have some classic breakfast foods. You can get a bagel with cream cheese. You can get eggs benedict or an omelette. They have lots of things here. They also have a fantastic detox juice, which is basically like a green juice. Or if you just want a regular fresh squeezed juice, they have uh, orange juice, mango, and then also naranjilla. It's actually really hard to choose what we want. But my favorite thing that they have here is when you order tea and they have real tea, they have Earl Grey tea, they don't just bring you a cup, they bring you a whole pot so you can settle in for breakfast. And I was thrilled that the hotel organized a cooking class with Chef Jose Tamayo because we were able to talk about the controversial use of ketchup in ceviche, which not only adds umami, but also a little bit of sweetness. Now, while a lot of people talk about the food at Casa Gangatena, I was most interested in coming to the Gangatena bar. And that is because they have a fiestas series. So it's six signature cocktails that represent different festivities and cultural celebrations throughout different regions in Ecuador. It's not just a name for the menu, but they actually look for ingredients from that region and flavors that really represent that festival. As well, they also worked with a ceramist to create six different drinking vessels that you could also purchase if you'd like. But let me tell you, they're so beautiful. It's called Mama Negra. Now, Mama Negra is the most important festival in the Cotopaxi region, and it actually happens twice a year. It celebrates the patron saint of mercy who helped stop the Cotopaxi volcano eruption in 1742. Now, what's interesting about this and about Ecuadorian culture is that there's a lot of discussion about syncretism, and that is the blending together of different cultures. In this case from Mama Negra, it is the indigenous peoples, the Spanish, and people from Africa. And so Mama Negra really celebrates the joining of all of that. This cocktail includes rum, toasted butter, purple sweet potato, cacao mucilage, and then sherry cask whiskey. And the ceramist created this as the vessel. And this is similar to a lot of the imagery you will see during this festival. Let's give it a shot. Mmm, ooh, this is complex. So, you definitely feel the toasted butter, the toasty notes of it, the warmth, but then you also get this like punch of red berry. It's really interesting. Mmm, this is delicious. Almost has a little bit of a tiki feel to it in that I think it might be a bit boozy, but also so fruity, it's delicious. Ah, oh, this is fantastic. Mm -hmm. 